She's the biggest newsmaker of the day, Dr. Rosalina Kombe, the former IABC commissioner, joining me now from New Jersey. Thank you so much for being here today. Why exactly did you resign, Dr. Kombe? Uh, Larry, it's good to hear your voice. Uh, this was not an easy decision for me to make. It was not an easy decision for me to leave, uh, especially the staff that I have worked with in the fields and to leave my own country. But it had reached a point where I did not feel that my contributions were making any impact really in the process in Kenya. And that I felt that somebody else could take that position and be able to carry on with the work. As you heard Chairman Chibukati himself speak today, he expressed uh, what his frustrations have been in leading the commission, in being unable to make decisions without uh, consensus in being unable to have his motions uh, really passed because there are some commissioners who continue to resist any attempts to make reforms in the commission. We'll so really, that's my purpose. That, is what, that was my goal. Why did you resign in such a manner? You were going on an official trip to Dubai and then you went to the U.S. You know, look, I, I have tried officially to leave the country before and it has been difficult. I could not say the sort of things that I have been able to speak out openly without fearing for my security. I mean, I am sure that if there are other people in the commission who had the opportunity to be able to say those sort of things and have their security intact, they would be able to do that. But I, had, I did not feel that I could be safe. I could continue being safe uh, in the country. My security has been an issue before. I have downplayed it all along, saying that my focus needed to be on the elections, needed to be on the work, and that the Kenyan people did not want to hear about my security concerns. But, uh, you know, frankly, Larry, I think we are facing a difficult situation in the right. country. We have to face that reality as a country and try to forge a way forward from there. So are you telling us that the last time you were trying to leave the country and you were blocked, that was not something that's usual that happens to all other government employees? No, it's not usual at all, Larry. Uh, immediately uh, after the 15th, I believe it was 15th or 16th of August incident, Chairman Chebukati wrote to Mr. Kinwa asking for clarification on whether there was any additional required letter that I needed to have before I traveled to New York. And we got a letter in writing from Kinwa confirming that commissioners only needed to get clearance from the chairman. I had that clearance when I when I was traveling in August. I was still stopped with that. And today, uh, you know, two days ago, when I traveled, I traveled with the same letter. Right. The same letter that the chairman had given me, and there was no problem. There so somebody no in government was trying to block you from leaving the country at that time. I believe uh, they had their fears, they had their concerns. I think they mistakenly thought that I had. Uh, information that was damaging, which I did not have at that time. And that is why I believe they were trying to make it difficult for me to leave the country. Do you have information that is damaging now? I mean, look, I have already made clear in my letter, in my statement, the concerns that I have in election preparedness. I have said on several occasions that election preparedness is not just about technicalities. It is about ensuring that you have an environment of trust that you have an environment of confidence, that you have an environment that is free of intimidation so that both the staff of the commission and the voters can be able to come out and vote. How do you think this will go down among your staff? You talked about the difficulties they're facing. You are the chairperson of the Elections Operations Committee and then you go out of the country to inspect the printing and you disappear. You don't think this betrays them? I'm obviously pained by the, by, by the decision that I had to take. But I have also received a lot of uh, support from my staff. I have received a lot of uh, messages from my staff who are saying, Commissioner, former Commissioner, they should use, uh, you, you have done us proud. You are speaking what we, should, we have been wanting to say for a while. We are, you're speaking out on our behalf. So I, while I feel the part of the disappointment of having to leave the staff, I also feel that it is important that somebody is able to speak what many people would like to say. There are many people, I'm sure, in that country who would love to say the sort of things that I have said. But they are cowed. And they have reason to be cowed. My staff, my former staff, have reason to be Because they lost their staff. We lost Chris Mustandoff. He was brutally murdered. 
we have never known the reason for his murder. So when, when you have staff who are unable to speak issues out, they have very good reason for not speaking out. Your statement today says that the commission needs to be courageous and speak out, that the election as planned cannot meet the, meet the basic expectations of a credible election. What do you mean? You know, it is possible to hold an election. I, I don't doubt that. But it's whether that election is one that meets the basic requirements of credibility. For you to have a credible election, you must have the correct environment. You have to have the right environment for that election to take place. You know, I know that a lot of people will perceive this as a partisan uh, uh, move that I have made. It is not a partisan move. We cannot underestimate the fact that you have a candidate who garnered 44% of the vote, not participating in an election, and then wash, wish it away. Chairman Shibukati, in his own statement that I have had the chance to read, talks about the examples of countries in Africa that have done that, that have gone ahead with an election in which a major actor pulls up and the result of those, ele of, of those elections and the economy and the legitimacy of that leadership that comes out of there. So we have to look at these issues. These are, you know, it is important that we carry everybody as much as possible along with us as we move towards an electoral process. The chairman's statement that you referred to says that the IEBC is technically and operationally prepared for the election next week. Do you agree? I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that uh, the, the ballot papers will be printed on time. I don't doubt that the ballot boxes will be delivered on time. I don't doubt that the paper and the pens that will be used for an election will be ready. What I have been saying is that we cannot just have an election. It has to be a credible election. We had an election on the, on the 8th of August that was voided, that was invalidated by the Supreme Court. So that is not the kind of election we want to have again. We want to have an election that is credible, an election that we can all be proud of and say that, yes, this reflects the will of the, the people. Yes, we have been able to bring more inclusivity into the process. We have brought everybody along to the process. That is the kind of election that I would like to be associated with. Dr. Akombe, do you believe that the August 8th presidential election was credible? You know, I believe very much in a lot of the work that we did towards the 8th of August election. You will recall even the chairman speaking today, he talked about the fact that the atmosphere that we have right now is very different within the commission than the atmosphere that we had before the 8th of August election. So when I look at the results of the 8th of August election, they pretty much reflect the will of the people. Were there mistakes that were done in handling the Supreme Court orders? Absolutely, yes. And that is what has been, you know, that is why I have been attacked on many occasions because I was raising that and saying that if you have secretariats responsible for the implementation of the Supreme Court orders, you needed to take action against those staff who did not comply, who made us lose billions of money that we had spent in the last election. That said, with the current political environment, should the IEBC carry out the election next week? You know, Larry, we can go ahead and have an election next week, but it is not an election that one could consider that is a credible election. So we need to choose as a country. Do we need to just go on with the election for the sake of ticking the box that we've had an election? Or do we want to have a credible election in, in place that doesn't return us back to the Supreme Court, that doesn't return us back to street protests, that doesn't return us back to the 2007-2008 right. situation? So are you saying that if the election on 26th October goes ahead, it will return us back to the Supreme Court? I mean, I do not see how it cannot because of the, you know, the, the environment, you know, some of the actions that we have taken. Look, I'll use a very simple example on transmission of results. You know, one of the issues that led to the invalidation of the results was the electronic transmission of results. We tried our best to ensure that we reconfigured the system to allow for the transmission of results to be both the text and the image. That is a commitment we made. That is what we published uh, last week as part of the things we are doing. But now we are coming out and telling you and telling the Kenyan people that we can be able to send the text results either right. because it's too late for us to be able to add the, the rest of the candidates there. For me, this is the time by which we should have come out and said to the Kenyan people, or to the Supreme Court, that look, 
this is what you asked us to do, but because of these other issues that have come up, we cannot be able to reconfigure our systems to allow us to proceed with sending both the text and the image results. Give us more time. Let us have more discussions. Let us see how we move forward with this. That is what I mean. I say that you do not want to have, you know, the main issue was electronic transmission of results. You do not want to go back to the Supreme Court without being an area of contention again. Should Chairman Wafula Chebukati resign, as some have asked for him to do? You know, that is his decision. I really don't want to make that decision for him. I applaud him for being a very good leader, for being somebody who is uh, very calm, who's, uh, who has his, his heart in the right place. He wants to do well in the country. He wants, you know, he, as somebody who was a victim, as he said himself, of the 2007-2008 violence, he does not want to lead that country to violence. He's staying there because he's trying to make sure that we do all we can to avert a situation that is worse than it is right now. I failed in being able to stick along for as long as he's willing to do so. I hope that the King will give him a chance to be able to lead that commission to something that is much better than what we have right now. Both of you talked about how divided the commission is. How divided exactly are commissioners of the IABC? I mean, the chairman made it very clear. I mean, he already said how he, he you know, he loses his motions. He's not able to approve, uh, get things that are approved uh, the way he wants. And, uh, you know, that is really the nature of the commission. That is what it has been for a few months. But also what we have is uh, two centers of power. So you have the commission on one hand, which is one center of power. And then you have the secretariat on the other hand, which is a center of power. And politicians on both sides find it fit to, you know, to, to, pit, to pit one side over the other, right. which makes it very difficult for, for the commission to be able to do its work well. It was reported that at plenaries, you and the chairman seemed to be aligned, but there were other commissioners on the other side that overruled almost everything that you tried to do. Is that true? And how far did this go? I mean, that is a true reflection of what it is. And the chairman in his own statement today has, has reaffirmed that. And, in, you know, this had been going on for, for a while now. And when you get to an issue, to a point whereby issues of safety and security of staff even become things that people want to decide and vote on, on whether you are going to ensure that uh, before you deploy staff to train in other places, uh, you know, where we had protests at the time, you need to be cautious. If, if you cannot agree unanimously on something like that, it shows you that that commission is moving forward. You know, Larry, to be frank, the, what really broke my heart, what really made me make this decision in the end to leave right. was my visit was my visit to Siaya, it was my visit to Kisumu, it was my visit to Homa Bay. I saw our staff committed to do the right thing, but they kept on asking me, Madam Commissioner, didn't you, did you have to get to this point? Couldn't you have sought the Supreme Court's uh, decision? Couldn't you have asked the Supreme Court to give us more time so that we can bring everybody on board? Right. Must we have a commission that is this way? Okay. And I was helpless because at that point, I know that Chairman Chebukati had put forward that proposal. Chairman Chebukati had suggested we go after the withdrawal of Raila Odinga, right Honorable Raila Odinga, that we should seek the intervention of the interpretation of the Supreme Court. So why did why didn't the yes, IBC seek the interpretation of the Supreme Court after Raila Odinga withdrew? I'm sorry, Larry, I missed that point. Why did the IBC not, the, not seek the interpretation of the Supreme Court after Raila Odinga withdrew from the election? Because the majority of uh, commissioners did not want. They felt that, uh, you know, somebody has a choice, uh, that uh, Right Honorable Raila Odinga had a choice and he chose to bail out of the election and we should just proceed with it. And uh, as I said, uh, when you are in a situation whereby you vote over everything, including that, what, what was the chairman left with? Are you saying that the IBC commissioners is tilted more in favor of Jubilee? I mean, look, I'm not here to classify one, people one way or another. I know that I am already being branded one side or another, which I am not. I'm not going to go into the same uh, situation of trying to brand people one way or another. All I am saying is that we have commissioners who have made it impossible for the chairman to make the changes that he would like to make. He has made an appeal to those commissioners uh, in his statement today, and I'm hoping that people will heed his call, that people will look seriously at what is going on and stop pretending that everything is okay. Everything is not okay. 
You are... We have a political problem. We need to solve that political problem. Your statement is in many ways in step with what NASA has been saying all along. Did you hold brief for NASA at the commission? I don't hold brief for anybody. I did not hold brief for NASA. I did not hold brief for Jubilee. I have been accused on social media of being a Jubilee mall. I have been accused on social media of being a NASA mall. And where I come from, when you have people from both sides attacking you, then you know that you're being impartial. And that is what I have tried to do because I care about this guy. You know, Larry, I didn't have to take this job. I did not have to take the job of commissioner at the IBC. Right. I did not have to. I took it because I thought I could contribute something to my country. I thought that I could be given a chance to be able to redeem the country so that we don't go back to 2007, 2008 situation. But we're heading right there. We're heading there without looking at the repercussions of the actions, the selfishness of the politicians in Kenya is going to lead that country to a disaster. We have to avoid that. And when I took this chat, I thought, let me come out and speak out. I could have left quietly and come back to the comfort of my job. But I decided to speak out because of patriotism, because I care about that country, because I love that country. It has given me, it has made me who I am today. But people will say that's easy for you to say when you're a dual citizen of Kenya and the U.S. So you can easily run off to your other country. For people who don't have that choice, they're stuck here. And that is why, because I know that I have an opportunity that other people don't have. I have an opportunity that Chairman Chebukati does not have right now. That is why I'm here to speak out. Speak on the behalf of those people who want to do the right thing, but don't have the opportunity that I have that want to do what is right for the country, but don't have the voice to be able to speak out. So I am speaking out today. I am speaking out because I care for that country. Why? If I did not care, I could have come quietly and stayed in the comfort of my house without speaking to anybody or without saying anything more. Will you come back to Kenya? I would love to come back to me. It is my home. That is where I was born. That is where I was raised. But I know that the current conditions and hearing all the rhetoric that I've had from politicians today, that I don't have space in that country for now. But I'll continue serving in whatever capacities from wherever I am. So you are, in fact, in self-imposed exile? Well, there are times when that has to happen. And it has happened that it is my turn now to, to, to play that part. The chairman's statement, Chibukati, today said that without critical staff changes in the secretariat, it is impossible to have free and fair elections. And he called on secretariat staff that have been mentioned adversely to step aside. How far should this go? Should the CEO, Ezra Chiloba, resign? I mean, I have said that very clearly on many occasions. Uh, it's just that uh, our voices sometimes uh, fizzled out. That uh, you have a secretariat as another uh, power. Uh, that, that manages the entire process there. You, it is important. I mean, if in other places, in other places, it is Ezra Shilova who should have resigned, not Rosalyn Akombe. So under what circumstances do you think the IBC can still carry out the election next week? Or at, at this point, do you think it's just impossible to do so? I, uh, Larry, not as currently constituted. Yes, they can carry an election. They can proceed and have an election. But it will not be a credible election. It will not be a credible process. People are criticizing you for having done this. At least one cabinet secretary, Najib Balala, said that if the country bans, you should be held personally responsible. If this country bans, if our country bans, clearly there are, there are many people that should be held responsible. And the reason I have not waited until we start killing each other before speaking out was basically to do that to prevent us from getting to that point. So we are at a point whereby I believe we can still fix the problems that we have. It is not too late. We do not need to use violence. We need to be frank with ourselves and say, let us come round the table. This is a political crisis. We need to come round and address it. I have heard this from President Kenyatta today. He is appealing for prayers. We need to go beyond prayers. We now need to come together as a country to be able to solve the problems around the table. They are political problems. You cannot expect the commission as currently constituted to resolve those political problems. We just need to come around the table as we have done in the past. We are a resilient people. I believe that we can come around the table and solve our problems and avert going back to the 2007 and 8 solution. There is still time. Why, but not 
Why didn't like, you speak up a week ago? Like, Why didn't you speak up a month ago? Why didn't you speak up and resign just after the Supreme Court ruling? Why now? Well, you may be aware that I have written two detailed memos to both to the chairman and to my, my fellow commissioners. You might have also, if you are paying a bit of attention, you might have noticed that in the last few weeks, I have been talking a lot about the credibility of the election. When I was briefing the observers a few days ago, I gave an example of a country where I worked, where the technical preparations for the elections were perfect. But we, as, the, as, in, as observers in that country, had concluded that although the technical preparations were perfect, the conditions for free fair, and fair elections did not exist. I have said these points in the boardrooms, and that is why I have been a victim of those phone calls. I have had some members of parliament, uh, you know, following the news. I even had one of them who is who had been called, who had been sent to come and tell me to resign in September because I was giving people a hard time. She had been asked to come and talk to me and tell me to leave in September because I was being tough-headed. I was asking for Ezra Chiloba and others to resign and that they could not resign. They could not leave. They were, ne they were never going to leave. So I have left that space for them now All right. because they had told me very clearly that it was either me or them. And so I believe that they now have opportunity to be able to replace me with somebody that can be able to carry the water for them. Speaking about that political problem you mentioned, there have been two solutions. NASA has irreducible minimums. They say they will not go to the election unless these are implemented. Jubilee has amended the election amendment laws which are awaiting presidential assent or whatever he will do. How would the effect of this, what would the effect of this be on the election? NASA's irreducible minimums or Jubilee's election amendments? You know, and that's why I have been saying that in such an environment whereby you're having people, you know, using threats of protests uh, with the reducible minimums, when you have uh, political parties using their parliamentary strength to make uh, electoral amendments, that is not the right environment to continue working, uh, you know, preparing an election on. It is not the right environment. Both actions do not help the country. They do not move the process forward. And that's why I keep appealing, as the chairman has appealed, that let us come around the table as Kenyans. Let's try and resolve those things. Those irreducible minimums should be a subject of discussion among the political actors. Those electoral amendments are the things that are supposed to be subject to discussions among the political actors. My appeal, Larry, really, and I'm sorry I have to rush out, yes. is that uh, as a country, we really need to come together and seriously look at this. I am okay with being vilified. I am okay with being called names because I think I am playing a role of bringing out the issues that people don't want to talk about. People do not want to face the reality and say, this is where we are as a country. Let's come together. Let's solve our problems. I have the faith and optimism that we'll be able to resolve them as long as we come around the table and discuss in frankness and sincerity. Finally, there are people who are portraying you as a traitor. Others see you as a patriot. What do you make of this firm divide within the country and how your role in this has been seen? You know, my mother and father raised me all the time to say the truth. And what they have raised me to do is to stand by the truth at all times. I was not going to disappoint my parents by not standing by the truth. So I don't mind whichever names that people would like to call me. All I want to be remembered for is that I have stood up for the truth. I have stood up for what is right. And I have stood up for what is right because I care deeply for that. And I do not want to see that country go down the drain. So if my coming out and being insulted will bring some consciousness in us as a country, then, then, uh, then so be it. So I don't mind those names. I don't mind the name calling. I don't mind what I'm seeing on social media. But if it will resolve, it will bring some, some sort of reality to our political system, then that will be my joy. All right, Dr. Rosalina Kombe, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have to run out. We appreciate your time. All right, thank you. All right, Dr. Rosalina Kombe, former commissioner of the IABC, speaking to us out of New Jersey, where she is, she says on her own accord, in self-imposed exile after leaving the IABC just seven days or so from the election.